Hello everybody, hope you're doing great. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe, press the bell icon. Also check out the top right eye for more nice links. Today we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna create an initialize function for the Lua states, which will help us call a few functions as soon as the state is created. So we don't have anything like that yet. We're gonna do that. Then we're gonna create a window through Lua. So the window is gonna reside in our engine, but we're gonna create it through Lua. And this will help us recreate and create the window multiple times through Lua whenever we we want to we're gonna clean up a few things we're gonna remove some test functions and test variables hopefully we're gonna have fun and you're gonna learn a lot of stuff so I'm gonna open my game state Lua .lua file and I'm gonna create a function here called initialize in initialize end and it's not gonna do anything just yet it's just gonna print that we're calling this function so we can debug it and see whenever it's called then I'm gonna open my state.h and state.cpp file and I'm gonna create an initialize function for that, just like we have with update and render. So void initialize, I'm defining this function now and the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna go into the CPP file and I'm gonna copy the entire update function code and just paste it in the initialize function. And we're gonna replace all the update with initialize. Initialize, initialize, just to the errors as well. Initialize function, once all this is done, you basically have an initialize function. All it's gonna do is just call a Lua version of it in the game state. And that means that we have to have this function defined in Lua. The last thing remaining is in our engine.cpp, wherever we create the state, we load the file. After that, we wanna initialize the state. And that if we don't do that, that will mean that the state's initialize function won't be called. So I'm gonna take top and I'm gonna say initialize just like that. And you wanna make sure it's after load file because otherwise, if this file isn't loaded, this initialize function is not defined. So make sure it's afterwards. Great guys, now we're gonna create the window itself. So I'm gonna go into my engine.h file and I'm gonna say sf render window window. And I'm not gonna make it a pointer or a reference. It's just gonna be a regular window like this. And before we do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and create a poll event update function. So I'm just gonna call it poll event. And this will make sure that we can pull all the windows events. Now, if you guys know about SFML, you guys know that each window has an event queue where if you press a button or you do anything, there that command will be placed in the command queue and slowly but surely all the command queue stuff will be handled. And that's what we're gonna handle in here. If you don't handle it, nothing's gonna happen. That's why we need one of these. The poll event function is very simple. All we're gonna need is a SF event E variable and we need a while loop because remember it's a queue. So we need to go through the entire queue each frame and it's not gonna be that huge and don't worry, yeah, I know while loop seems scary, but it's never gonna be an infinite loop. So we're gonna go through the windows events, window dot poll event E. So I'm gonna take the next event from the queue and place it in this event. Then I'm going to say if, and we're just gonna handle one event here, E dot type equals SF event closed. This event is triggered whenever we press the X button in the window. And when we do that, it doesn't close by itself. We need to handle that event. So this is what's gonna handle it. This will make sure that we close the window, window.close, and we're gonna exit the application with the code zero. There you go, now we're handling events. Now I'm gonna go down to my update function here and I'm gonna call this new function, poll event, and that will automatically poll this events each frame. Of course, the important part is to be able to create a window from Lua and for that we need a Lua function and registering it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a static int create window and I'm also gonna give it the CPP prefix just so I know that it's a C++ function. I'm gonna copy paste the Lua state L into this and we're going to define it. As I define it, I'll jump into the CPP file for engine and go in here and copy the get global engine, Lua engine accessor and all that because this is something we're gonna do in each one of the functions we create that will go over to Lua. So we always need an engine instance to access member variables. That's why we need to do this in each of the functions. The next step is gonna be to just check the stack and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a STDC out for this just quick and I'm gonna comment it out but it's gonna be really important because I wanna show you guys how the stack works when it comes to input parameters and stuff like that and I promise I'll explain all of this don't worry let's just start off by creating a input or a printout what I wanna print out is how the stack looks like right now so I'm gonna do a get top right now and I'm gonna do a space and this will be how many how many things are on the stack right now 
then I'm gonna print out all the parameters that are gonna come in here. Remember, when we're creating a window, we want the width, the height, the title, and we want a style either full screen or not. So that's what we're gonna start off with. And for that, we need four input parameters coming from Lua. And we need to cache those in here. And what the way we're gonna do that is through the stack. So I'm gonna print out how many items are on the stack. And I'm gonna print the first item on the stack, which will be Lua type name. I wanna see what the type is of the object laying on top of the stack or at any position in the stack. And if you look here, it will say int tp and that's not the index on the stack. That is a type number, a type version kind of. So what we need to do is we need to do another Lua type in here. And this will check the type of the object on the stack. You see now it changed the index here. So I'm gonna put that at one. So what this does is it checks the type name for the type on this position of the stack. I'm gonna make four of these. Remember we have four input parameters and the entire engine user data on the stack as well. So when we're gonna print these out, that'll be great. Now we need to handle the actual input parameters. They're coming in, so this is just debug. We're gonna handle them down here. First of all, we're gonna get a width and a height. So const unsigned vmx i'll call it and i'll say lua two integer remember two integer is very important here l and one then we're gonna do a duplicate of that and vmy that will be the second parameter and then we're gonna make a string std string and this will be the title coming in and this will be to string at position three and then the final thing we're gonna do a const bool full screen at position four and this will be a two boolean Simple as that. These are the four parameters we have caught and we have put them in our little variables here. Promise you again, I will explain this in just a minute. First of all, let's just handle the entire thing. So of course we're gonna have two different ways to handle it whenever we have a full screen or not. So I'm gonna check if full screen like that and then else, first of all, if we have a full screen, we're gonna say engine window dot create a full screen window. SF video mode, we're gonna use our parameters now, VMX, vm y so it's a width and the height then we're gonna say title and then if we have a full screen all we need to do is we need to do style full screen that will create a full screen window for me very easily but if we don't want a full screen window we're gonna have to give it a few more things so we want to be able to close that window and we want a title bar so we can see the title by using a bitwise operator you can use both of these flags and create a window that way there you go guys this function will create a window for us from lua but let me just explain what's gonna happen first of all. When you call a function from Lua with the parameters, it will send the four parameters first before it even gets to these lines here. So this will be on top of the stack. So let me show you guys how that will work. If we have a beautiful stack here, first of all, the function will be called here. It will push the four things onto the stack in the order we give it like that okay and the red one here will be pushed later and this is our engine all right so what's going to happen is we're going to stay at one two three four five that's how the stack's going to look and minus one is going to be sorry minus one is going to be right there and this will be minus two minus three minus four and minus five so there you go, minus one is always the top of the stack and so is the largest number. And since the engine user data was pushed last, it will be on top of the stack. Hence why we access it with the minus one, as you can see here, right there, minus one, that will access the engine because we know it's on the top, but all the parameters that came in, they came in in this order. That's why I'm doing one, two, three, four. The first one that came in was the width, which will be right there. On top of that, we put the Y, the height, then we put the title on the third one and the full screen boolean on the fourth one. In that order, we're going to send it. And there you go. That's how the stack looks. Hopefully you guys understand that. I know it's a little complicated. You got to practice a little bit, but we'll see it as we print it out. The only thing remaining now is going to be to register it. So I'm going to copy paste all this stuff here. And I'm going to also copy paste the name of the function create window and paste it in here. Now we'll register it properly. If I go into my game state Lua here, in the initialize, I'm going to create a window. So CPP create window and I'll send in the parameters that we talked about. So it's going to be 1920, 1080 for the height. We're going to say my window and then we're going to go ahead and say false for the full screen. And let's run this now and you'll see that we'll get a beautiful window pushed out. Right there, now we have a window. And if you're quick enough with the command line, you'll see that the initialize was called here. We have five items on the stack, just like we talked about. The first one is the height or the width, sorry. Then the height, both of those are numbers. Title is a string. The Boolean is full screen or not. 
and then we have the engine user data on top and then the update function is called and then we start updating and rendering so now we can create a window as we want from lua and that makes our life a lot easier and if you want now we can comment out all of these things but you can keep it in case you want to see how to print out a type of an object on the stack now guys go ahead and investigate this and check it out i know you guys will learn this in no time it's very important to know how to work with the parameters and everything when you're working in lua now we're just going to clean up a few things uh well, I want to clean up this Lua test function, remove that completely, go up to the private int test here, remove that as well, and go into your CPP file, you'll see a bunch of red things here, we're going to remove the entire Lua test, and we're going to go up to the constructor and init states and remove all of this red stuff here, as well as the register for the function, go into your game state Lua, .lua file and remove Lua test, the call here, also remove all the printouts for the render and update but we can, and also for the initialize, but we can keep the print for the entire state here. I can rename this to game state start, just so we know when it started. Clean, very nice, very nice. Now, as you can see, our window is not clearing. It's not doing anything. I mean, we don't get a good clear here. We're not displaying the window like we should. And to create those function, we'll do that in the next video where we'll create the clear and the display functions for our beautiful window and then we can start rendering things on it slowly but surely thank you guys for sticking with me thanks for watching keep learning take care i'll see you in the next one Bye bye